What's up, everybody? This is episode 11, <laughs> New Jersey, <laughs> Drizzen, Ajax, you know who he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, we're really going to talk about, uh, like, character loyalty and being, like, a specialist of, like, other character and, like, why you won't move off your character mm-hmm. or you don't want to pick up a secondary, so, you know, stuff like that. So, like, Ajax, who do you play, Merle? Well, obviously, I play the, the main man, as we see right here. It, Ike, I happen. I love the character. It fits my play style and the way I want to play the game. Mm-hmm. I've always been very much a, a big body, hit hard but kind of fast character. Like I, I like to get in and out. But something that comes with that is the fact that he's not exactly the best character in the game. He has mm-hmm. a lot of hard work to go into it, and that's what we really want to touch base on in this episode. Um, you know, when it comes to trying to be a character specialist, you have to accept one key important thing when you first start, yep. and that is. You're going to have a hard time. <laughs> Life is going to suck for you. Yeah. But you can make it work. You, It's not something that just comes with like an easy guide. Because mm-hmm. if you want to say that, oh, if I'm going to pick up Ganondorf and I'm going to be the next zero, you're crazy. Yeah. Like you, Because you have to put in so much more work by comparison to, uh, to those who say pick up a Bayonetta or a Cloud or something. But across the board in FGC period, yeah. there's a big difference between deciding to play for fun and deciding to win. Mm. And when people want to win, most of the time, the way that they're going to trail towards is those higher caliber characters, characters with better frame data, characters who consistently place top. Also referred to as like the top tiers and stuff. You are going to have a much harder time against them. The only way you can solve this is you have to grind out those matchups. You have to grind out every single matchup in the game as hard as you can. Go to your discords. Go to YouTube videos. Practice in training mode repeatedly by yourself or with other players. Like you have to take that step above others by like ten feet. Like whatever someone does, you have to leap ahead of them so much harder with the amount of work you have to put in just to maybe receive that, that success. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's 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 difficult, but you know. It's still doable, and yeah, yeah. Uh, like when you come across some players, such as say like T, who got third at Civil War. With yeah, Link. dude, with Link, that was amazing, man. Yeah, like nobody. Link is like literally my favorite character. I played him in every Smash game, and I mm-hmm. just can't stop playing Link. But at this game, I don't know, just like I don't know. I just I started off with DD, mm-hmm. just didn't work out, man. He's just I like playing DD because I just I'm I'm having fun while I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Just, I know I'm gonna go too, but just like I just like playing DD, but. Mm-hmm. Made the switch to Marth. I mean, he's not that much low to your character, but like, I don't know. I just I have fun with Marth too. So I mean, like, well, eh. Marth definitely not after all the uh, his buffs. He's definitely way way higher up there. Uh, but you know, like it's like you just said, you get a lot of people who will pick a low tier, right? And I love low repeated, tiers. I love low tiers too. I'm a low. I'm, <laughs> I try I'm, to win with them. <laughs> particularly in Smash, I'm a heavy specialist. I love mm-hmm. playing heavy characters. Um, you know, I don't normally, I don't. I'm not normally drawn to the quick characters because they don't hit as hard they don't kill as early and i love the satisfaction of killing someone early mm-hmm. in uh in most fighting games but it's like you said with that whole with the ddd thing you i i love playing ddd but i know i'm gonna go o2 yet there's so many people who will say that to themselves prior to a tournament right mm-hmm. but still end up picking that character if you want to remove that from the conversation the things you have to do you have to like put that extra step above you have to uh, you like you have to almost be someone who's preemptively thinking, I'm going to develop the meta for this character. I may not be that person that does, yeah, yeah. but you have to almost play with that mindset because you have to play so much harder. That's why you get a lot of people such as Fatality being one of the, uh, you know, like three or four Captain Falcons that do anything. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Uh, T, obviously, with Link. Pretty much the only solo Link. There's other ones like Silva Unknown and... Um, Caesar and stuff like that, but you don't see them at the level that these people play at. Yeah. Um, yeah, like and... for for instance, like uh, like Scott, like I've I've heard uh, Scott like repeatedly say that like, oh, I'm gonna drop Luigi because I'm just mm-hmm. I just want to pick up like a high tier. But like, look at Elegant at you know two GG championships. Like, mm-hmm. look, but it's like yeah, he's playing Luigi, but look how he's playing him mm-hmm. at that matchup. Mm-hmm. Like like what he's doing. Like when he was playing the the sonic ken or whatever mm-hmm. he was like uh game five he was just like constantly shooting fireballs and just like i'm just gonna wait till you come to me mm-hmm. like th- just the way he was playing the matchup is just like how you need to think about it when you want to pick like those little two characters and just like mm-hmm. well yes you also see um 
you know, at the end to give Scott a bit of a praise too, with the fact that he's repeatedly played this character. Now, Luigi's not exactly like lower end on the spectrum when it comes to characters, but he requires a heavy amount of dedication yeah, yeah, to yeah. play. Um, and you've seen his results overall. He's gone from like that mid high. He's never been like low. Mm -hmm. when, it come, uh, when it comes to Scott. Scott's always been really good at the game. But he was always like that mid-top eight-ish area, lose to like Koga or uh, Ling or somebody along the way. But now he's consistently at like the one and two in the weeklies yeah. or the three. Um, out of region, he's taking out killers. At home, he's taking out killers when they show up to um, these events. And it's because the amount of work that he does, he, he the amount of research that goes into it. So it's it's not something that's very easy. Now, when you want to play someone that's say really low on the end of that spectrum, mm -hmm. just you have to you can't go into a tournament saying things like, "Oh, Bayonetta is stupid, Cloud stupid, Diddy Kong stupid." Yeah, you can say that all you want, right? Learn the matchup. Yeah, but you have to when you're at that character select screen. That's your decision. Mm -hmm. When you decide to press down on the A button over Ganondorf, over whoever they, at that lower spectrum, and your opponent picks that Bayonetta, you could have picked Diddy Kong. You could have picked Mario, but you chose to pick this character. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to ride with the consequences or work really hard at it and maybe reap the rewards because you end up being one of those people who no one has matchup experience against. Like uh, Raido with Duck Hunt. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, dude, he's great. Outside of Japan, we don't... Nobody in America compares to anything like the Japanese Duck Hunts. Why? Oh, yeah. Because they developed that meta. They are the premier Duck Hunts for a reason. And mm. they take out top caliber players because nobody knows how to play against them. <laughs> That's what you have to do who's a, to be who's at that a, level. Who's the little Kario player that was in uh, Frostbite? J uh, Japanese? Yeah. Sue. Sue, yeah. Dude, him against Zero, that was a crazy match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like, well, Lucario, Lucario is one of those um, one of those matchups, too. It's where It's scary. Like, yeah, the, like, Lucario's whole toolkit is like, okay, I win when I'm losing. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm actually doing better when I'm losing. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of characters in that lower tier spectrum, too, who... Don't have great fame data. Who have great kill potential? Mm -hmm. Who win by receiving a lot of rage? They get that comeback factor, mm -hmm. and that's how you have to handle playing against the matchup. Like say, uh, when I play Ike against Sheik, right? Yeah. I have to approach that matchup already assuming that at some point I'm gonna get grabbed. I'm gonna eat forty percent, or I'm gonna take a fair train and I might get carried all the way off to the side, and I'm gonna be put in a stressful situation. That is guaranteed to happen that matchup. Mm -hmm. But you see a lot of players who approach that uh, that point. They're like, oh, crap, I'm going to panic. I'll start mashing air dodge out on the side of the stage. And I'll start jumping too early or this or that. And then you get gimped. High-quality players with those top-tier characters have the ability to have that leeway to go out there. Because they have so much more recovery than you. Yeah. They have the ability to throw out more aerials while you're doing that. And they have combo breakers when you finally start getting in on them. So it's going to be frustrating. But you have to be willing to accept that. You have to go into the matchup already ahead of time knowing that at some point, shit's going to hit the fan hard. Mm -hmm. How you roll with it and how you adapt to that situation has to be instant. You can't just you can't just like try and do it on the fly because yeah, yeah. you're always going to lose in that situation to a top tier. So it's, um, it's much harder. But also, speaking of top tier player, uh, people who pick top tiers, I don't think like, look, it... it Sure, it's easy to complain about yeah, those players. I complain all the time. Uh, but it's like, at the end of the day, we're all here to win, right? Yeah. We're we're all here to to make ourselves the new face, be the next Nairo, be the next Zero, be the next the Buzz, um, without the pop offs, <laughs> uh, be be the the next anti whoever. Like we want to be that guy who's <laughs> we want to be that guy who separates ourselves, right? But if we're gonna try and do that as a low tier character specialist. You have to be willing to run with the fact that there are those who are going to pick those top tiers who want to mm -hmm. win too. And that's okay. That's okay that they want to win because this is competitive nature by by sport. Like, they, they, no matter what, everybody wants the best toolkit to win and make that money. It, that's just the way it rolls. So when you give a bunch of people shit about the fact that they're playing these characters, really all you're doing is just yeah. breathing hot air because you're the one who decided to pick that lower end tier character, but you can solve that 
by being that new person who develops that meta or being yeah, somebody yeah. who's really good at all those matchups who people go in and say, man, I really don't know the Ike matchup. I really don't know the Wario matchup. I really don't know the Duck Hunt matchup mm -hmm. because they keep losing to you because you put in that extra work above them. Yeah, so it really exactly. takes that extra level of grind in order to reach that point. What do you think about, uh, like, habits, people breaking habits and stuff? Oh, um, that's like a that's a big one. Like I know I have crazy. I do like literally the same thing all the time. And I never change it up. I could like I can just see why I lose half my matches like that. You see a lot of people who have some basic habits like rolling from the ledge or uh, mm -hmm. jumping too much. That's that that's a bit of an issue of mine too. I jump a lot uh, because it's a part of Ike's bread and butter the toolkit. Like he gets most mm -hmm. of his stuff by aerials. You have to really like almost have a self argument. Right, when you're in matches, you like you have to think more than your opponent, not just about the matchup, mm -hmm. but what about what you're doing too. It's like okay, this character is built around doing A, B, and C. Maybe I eliminate B because I'm doing it too much, and only hold it for situations where I know it'll definitely work, mm -hmm. or maybe a game two or three situation. Go for your bread and butters and stuff, sure. But when you're doing something like say Marth players, Marths love jumping off the ledge. Almost every time. Short hop, this... air dodge off the ledge, or jump off the ledge with an aerial. Because it's really good. Yeah, yeah. But that's what separates the best from the mediocre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best players know how to punish that every time. Just because something's good doesn't mean that it's not beatable. Yeah, yeah. You have to you have to be able to pull back from those situations because of something that may work for you a lot. Mm -hmm. Now you have to really look into something that maybe you're doing too much, except that you're doing it too much. Because a lot of people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to uh, it really say to themselves or to someone else, okay, I'm really uh, really noticeable mm -hmm. on what I do here. Yeah, I do too many routines here and there, and it's way too predictable. You'll hear someone like Light tell you that if you ever ask him for advice. One of the things he tells you all the time is when he sees something you're too predictable on, he's like, you are way too predictable. Yeah, And he's honest about it, and you have to be willing to accept that. Um, so that like breaking habits is hard because it is. it's like once you do it, it's just almost second nature to just want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like without thinking, you're like this situation, this is definitely what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. You have to break it down a lot more, whether you're playing Sheik or you're playing Bowser. Like no matter what, there's always the the flow charts that people yeah. will do, and then there's your individual flow chart. Yeah, yeah. What true, are you true. doing too much? You have to. Go back and watch your videos. Go back and watch your videos a lot. Have people who are on your side um, playing with you. Ask them. If they don't tell you anything, ask someone else. Now, sometimes people aren't going to want to tell you because they don't want you to learn how to beat them as well as they just don't know. Yeah, true. So, yeah, if you have for for a CT player that hasn't been to like a UG in a, in a minute, who would you want to see like to come back? Like one person, I could th like a couple people I could think of. Mr. Freeze, definitely would mm -hmm. want to see him come back. Uh Nevi, dude, like Nevi's like scary, bro. You, his yeah, Captain Falcon you, you is. You took my pick. Really? Nevi was my dude. Pick. Every time he like he shows up on Tuesday, man, I get mm -hmm. mad excited because I like I always try to get him. I try to get him on stream against somebody that mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I know you can win this, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like he's. I'm not gonna say even against Light, but like if Nevi like puts in the work, man, like his Captain Nevi's Falcon is extremely scary. explosive. He's uh, yeah. like when he gets in, he goes off like yeah. most Captain Falcon. Like he's he has the the same capabilities of like high level Captain Falcons when he gets in, mm -hmm. and he's he's very frightening. Um, I was gonna say freeze because he does sh he shows up on random. Like he was here. Yeah, but at, like um, like like life is starting to hit him now, and like he's you know working a lot more yeah. and all those stuff. But like I would just love to see him like come mm -hmm. back like hard, bro. Like because oh, yeah, no, like freeze. dude, Mister Freeze like top six consistently all the time mm -hmm. with, in the earlier yeah, with this guy that's with, a perfect like, example yeah. of uh of that difference There's someone like, else um for um well besides him the other one who popped in my head was mtn dude mtn 64 i would dude uh, like he, I wish he, he can make it out it's just that, yeah it's just like, i think he has a i think nd92 is like streaming a lot more and, mm -hmm. and he doesn't didn't do like want to come out or something or like uh yeah i think the last conversation mtn had with me was like his mom doesn't want him going out unless he's like unless his brother like brings him or something or like knows him but like he's young yeah. so it's like you know i was like yo how many more years do you guys like yeah like <laughs> two and a half or something i'm like dude, i can't wait till he comes back man. yeah i i he was um he he provided that 
the kid prodigy dynamic, kind of like what we what we throw on uh, right grammar. And, yeah, and well, even light because light is relatively young too. So, um, you know, he he provided that the fun factor of the kid who was like, like you want to see the kid win, mm-hmm. and you want to see like him put in work. Not that he's a kid, but like he's um, you know, it, it's it's it gives people something more relatable. Like you see a lot of uh, uh younger kids who watch streams, and they'll see all the 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 older guys made eighteen like eighteen plus. And they don't feel like they're gonna fit in the same way. They can't compete. Yeah, but yeah. then you have those kids like MTN who come in. They see him on stream and they're like, "Oh crap, he's my age. He's like the same way as me. Maybe I can compete, and maybe he'll talk to me or something." Yeah, like yeah. you never know. It gives more people to. It gives more people not something just to root for as a fan, mm-hmm. but someone they feel like they can go approach when they arrive here. Exactly, uh, but yeah. definitely Nevi is my number one pick. But close, close followed by MTN. I wish both of them would. Be consistently back here, and and it, there's a giant list of people too. Like uh, I would just throw the names like, out there. Anyway, Captain Zo- Awesome too. Zodi. Yeah. Well, Zo- Zodi's making his comeback at Arcadia December 23rd. Check that out. If you're not a PR player, come to December 23rd. This Arcadia, it's gonna be right here somewhere. It's up there somewhere. Elliot, oh. <laughs> Elliot, can we get this thing? Okay, thanks. Um. Uh, Where are I want to get the whole like I want to get for like 100 plus plus people for this Arcadia, man. I've never. Advertising an event so much mm-hmm. than this one, man. Like, I just want everybody to come out. I should have de- December 30th, but I'm like, yeah, the day before Christmas Eve, everyone's just chillaxing. Why not just get a quick tournament in before Christmas, you know? Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I think that's about it. Anything else you want? Last last thoughts? Uh, nope. I, you know, I'm just glad I was able to do quite a few episodes. Uh, how many weeks in a row is this now? I think it's week 11. It's week 11? Yes, yeah, so I was able to do quite a few episodes with you, so this uh, it's awesome. Glad to be out here, and uh, you know, just hopefully, hey, the tips and tricks that we're we're trying to give to you guys is helpful. Make sure you give like, follow, sub- subscribes to the channel. Uh, check them out on Twitter. Check them out on YouTube, uh, Twitch, all that good stuff. And be sure to give them, uh, be sure to give Drizzen the attention necessary so we can get more people focusing in on this stuff. Because then we'll get those attendance numbers up. Because without the players coming out, without you guys actually showing up here, we don't have a scene. And you're you're just as important as the two of us sitting here, and who, and the person who wins it first. So you have to, you have to come out so we can continue to have these conversations with you guys. Also, a quick update: we're actually coming out with something else called uh, the weekly update for UG. So we're just gonna like summarize like everything that's uh, everything that happened in the weeklies. That the PM the PM weekly onslaught Tuesday for Smash for You, the Friday night fights for. MVC and the additional uh, weekly that we have for Smash Wii U on Fridays. And then if we have a monthly on that weekend, we're, we're going to try to cover everything, give you guys even more content. So uh, mm-hmm. be sure to wait wait and uh, see that come out. It should be soon, a couple of weeks from now. Uh, that's about it, man. Yeah, I look forward to that. It's going to be very much like a ESPN sports broadcaster type topic, just breaking down who did what and who got what upset. Yeah, definitely, like I definitely so. want to highlight like a lot of the, the players and stuff. Cause like a lot of people are just doing so well. Like TRL at weekly 105, he got like third place. Like, like TRL's like a hit or miss, man. Like mm-hmm. if he's on, like he does mad good. Like when he, like I try to tell him, like dude, just who cares that you're playing in a tournament? Just like play for fun. And he does. He do, his movement speed has got a lot better with Diddy and just you know stuff like that, man. Like I just want to like when I see a player like that, just explode on like mm-hmm. getting top eights or like like even Zig zoo like he's mm-hmm. getting up there slowly like his fox is getting there like he's got a lot of uh tips from uh, light and stuff so mm-hmm. i mean he got i think uh top eight at one on week 105 too so mm-hmm. you know just like the, you know the, the slow changes man yeah it's, just it's being happened. able to highlight uh you know all those individuals rather than just uh you know everybody seeing light and ling being yeah, the yeah. grand finals again for the seventeen thousandth time like, like i like i love seeing like you know like i love seeing his progression of mm-hmm. like where he got to but like when other people are like uh, against him in top eight that like haven't made their top eight and they're playing as light mm-hmm. i love light but like i'm rooting for the other guy because like oh, yeah. i want to see an upset like like who can take out like is like, oh, yeah. like I mean, sometimes it gets repetitive like yeah like we get how good you are yeah we get it like <laughs> but like you know like even uh fucking uh, week 10 was it 104 it was a week before the invasion championship fucking uh retro took out trl to get top eight mm-hmm. retro's first top eight mm-hmm. ever at 104 weeks mm-hmm. and that's what got him into the championships too oh, yeah like he had to Dude, do that his pop to off like walking towards me to give me the result was like incredible bro <laughs> oh you know i saw it later on when he came home he was very very yeah, he was, uh, i was very i was really happy man 
All right, guys, this is going to do it for episode 11. Uh, stay tuned for episode 12 coming to you soon. Peace out, guys.